Okay, so moving on to our second part of database, which is task uh, A to E. Over here it says open the accommodation, uh, open the accommodation booking and members table. Lucia wants a list of all caravans who have signed up to receive an e-letter. That's your first criteria, and who have booked to stay in a shepherd's hut or a caravan. So this is your second criteria. Okay, so let us first. Uh, get the query design okay we are going to be using a query right so let's first get the query design into place let's come to create query design and they have told us to use all three tables okay very specifically in the question they said use all three tables okay uh, also here over here create the query on the accommodation booking and members table so let's take all three tables accommodation booking members and as you can see all three tables are connected via a one-to-many relationship Okay, let's uh, do a little bit of arranging first. Okay, excellent. Then the question paper says, uh, show only these fields in this order, member name, member ref, email. Member name, so we have member name, member ref, and email, okay? Then the question paper goes on to say, descending order of accommodation ref. Descending order of accommodation ref. Uh, one second, let's get that again. Okay, so we will be taking accommodation ref, but we will not be showing it. We will be taking it, but we will not be showing it, and we will be putting it in descending order. Okay. Then the question paper goes on. Uh, okay, so it stops here. Okay, uh, so what was our criteria? Number one is a list of clients who have signed up to receive an e letter. So where is our e letter field? Our e letter field is in the members table. Let's take it, but we will not be showing it. And we want those who have signed up, those who have said yes. So when we come to the members table for e-letter, it's a tick box. Okay. So tick means yes, no tick means no. Okay. Or tick means true, no tick means false. Okay. So what you can do is you can come over here and you can say my criteria is criteria is what? Uh, those who have signed up. So my criteria is yes. Whoever has signed up for an e-letter, those who have said yes, they want an e-letter. So we put yes over there. We want those who have ticked. Okay. So either you can put yes or you can put true, but do not put in double quotes because this is not a word that we are looking for. Instead, this is a statement that we are looking for. Okay, so E letter should be yes. And the next thing is uh, they should be staying in one of these types of accommodations. Okay, it should be a shepherd's hut or it should be a caravan. Okay, so we will be taking accommodation type. Okay, accommodation type will be taken. Okay, and over here we need two okay so let's come to accommodation type let's copy it control c inside double quotes control v close the double quotes or let's make this bigger we don't need this we can close this or we need it to be a caravan so control c inside double quotes control v close double quotes okay so members who want an e-letter and those who are going to one of these accommodations okay is there anything else that we need to do uh show only these fields sorting we have done we have taken the table okay let's run the query let's come to query design and let's click on run yeah so these are the results that we have received them okay so let's go ahead and save our query so how are we supposed to save it we are supposed to save it as e-letter underscore query so let's say e letter underscore query and say okay okay so the query has been saved next the question paper goes on to say lucia wants to produce a database report on the results from e letter query create a database report to display these results and thereafter there are some things that you need to do let us first get the database report created okay so make sure you are in e letter query then come to create and then come to report once again you have multiple options go with the first option where the computer will create the query for you okay stick to that itself okay so let's click on report and you can see within a second the computer creates the entire query for you okay now let's do it it should have a suitable title okay so let us go into design view let's go to design view that's the best place when it comes to editing a report okay in design view what does it say it should have a suitable title so what is this report all about this is about those who signed up to receive an e-letter and who was who booked to stay in shepherd's hut or caravan okay so you can say customers 
pro signed for a letter and booked uh booked what shepherds for caravan okay so we can keep a heading like this a title like this okay then it should include the logo so remember the logo will be in the bottom center that's how the uh footer i mean that's how this house style used to work so let's increase the space okay page footer let's come to report design let's come to insert image we have the logo already there waiting for us let's draw it over here okay so we have the logo over there as well okay the next thing that needs to be done is include the image you saved as caravan 2 okay so we got to get the image as well so what i would do is when inserting the image instead of inserting it in design view i would insert it in layout view if that would be possible let's see uh, let's come over here let's come to insert image browse caravan 2 okay let's draw it somewhere over here like that it's appearing on every record not a good idea uh, so let's do it in design view itself let's do it in design view itself report design insert image caravan to somewhere over what happened oops 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 click here click on a blank area insert image caravan to let's draw it somewhere over here okay so that's where you have got your image as well show only the required fields yes we did not add any fields we exactly obeyed this okay show the records sorted as required yes we did the sorting in the query itself we did the sorting okay you remember right enter your name candidate number and center number in the page footer so this is our page footer area so let's take a label okay can you see we have a label let's take a label let's draw that label over here in the page footer area and let's put your name your candidate number and your center number over there okay and once you're done with that it says make sure that all the data is displayed on one side of a4 and is easy to read so the best place to do check this out is by going to print preview so in print preview you can see is it fitting one a4 paper yes footer is visible page number is visible images are visible headings are visible title is visible okay so everything seems to be going fine uh, what else needs to be done save the report as e letter underscore report so let's click on save and let's save it as e letter underscore report and click on okay and the next thing is you're supposed to be printing print e letter report so you can simply come to uh, now since we are in print preview since we are in print preview you can just click on print and you can say you want to print all the pages there's only one page basically and then you can click on okay if you are not in print preview if you are in a normal view just say you are in design view we can come back to print preview okay if you come to the home tab you have the different views you can come to uh, print preview and from here you can click on print select your printer from over here and click on ok uh, with that uh, we have now come to the end of uh, task a to e okay uh, the next thing is task a to f where we have some questions to answer okay let's go through it okay uh, so over here in task a to f it says answer these questions in the document task a to address one address two postcode telephone number and gender are fields that could be added to the members database state one field that would use a format check okay so what they're talking about is uh, properties of a field okay let me uh, close these and explain this to you in detail so when you come into the members table and if you come into the design view for each field for each field you have various properties that are there okay for each field you have various properties that are there okay uh, as you can see in the bottom you have properties okay so you can put various properties to ensure you can put various properties as validation rules to ensure that users do not enter inconsistent data that users do not enter inaccurate data so one type of a check that you can have on your table you can put a check you can put a kind of a validation rule is something known as a format check so format check is basically you define how is the data going to be entered so you can define i want it to be all capital letters i want it to be all simple letters or for example if it is a number you can say i want it to be in currency format i want it to be in decimal format i want it to be in percentage format let me give you an example so for example if i select my data type as short text uh, when I come down as format, I don't have anything as such. 
but there are two things you can put the greater than symbol the greater than symbol means accept only capital letters okay or you can put the less than symbol which means accept only simple letters lowercase letters okay however if you change this to a number if you change this to a number you have various formats that you can select you can select do you want it to be a just a normal number do you want it to be a currency do you want it to be in euro do you want it to be a fixed amount do you want it to be a standard fixed in the sense decimal format or do you want it to be in percentage format okay you can select the format that the that the number is going to be stored in them okay say for example if the data if the data type is date and time so when it comes to date and time also you have various formats that you can select okay it can be a this type of a date it can be a long date with text in involved in it it can be a short medium you know you get different types of formats that you can select okay so when users enter data it will automatically go into one of these formats depending on the format that you have selected when you enter data into your database it will automatically go into that relevant format okay so over here they are asking you a question state one field that would use a format check so we have these fields listed over here so from over here we've got to write the answer as well let us open this document task a to f and the first question asks us uh, state one field that would use a format check now for address one i can't think of a format address two i can't think of a format postcode postcode you can have a format you can say accept only capital letters isn't it have you seen normally postcode comes only in capital letters okay so for postcode you can say you can use for format check you can use the postcode field okay so you can come over here and you can say post sorry post code okay the second question goes on to ask you uh state one field that would use a lookup okay so a lookup is a field that has limited values in it okay lookup is a field that has limited values you can just choose a value you can choose one value from that list okay so if you look over here uh, address i don't think you can have limited values address two you can't postcode also you can't telephone number you can't so then i think it's only gender so in gender you can have two fields which is m or f male or female isn't it so here you can put the lookup field as gender okay so you can say over here number two is gender then the third question asks us explain one problem that could occur if the limit to list property had a value of no okay now we skipped a small part over here it says this image shows the properties and values for the accommodation type field in the accommodation table so in the accommodation type field okay they are using a combo box okay where only these values are available for the user to select okay these are the values that are available for the user to select and in that they have put a property called limit to yes is equal to limit to list is equal to yes which means that users can only select values from here they cannot put their own values they cannot type in their own values no they can only take values that have been given from here and only one value they can take from here however if you change this limit to list and if you make this no then users will be free to enter their own values okay they can enter values that they want if they want they can even keep that field blank okay so they are asking you explain one problem that could occur if this is set to no so the problem that could occur is you would start receiving inaccurate values inconsistent values because users have the ability to enter their own value right so they might enter values with wrong spellings they might enter values that you do not accept normally okay so the problem over here is you can say the problem is uh, this may uh, allow users to enter inaccurate or inconsistent values okay so allowing people to i mean not limiting to the list okay not limiting to the list will allow users to enter inaccurate or inconsistent values okay state the reason why a query may use a, may require a logical operator so we have the greater than this less than equal so why do we use these logical operators okay so you can say to receive values let's press enter logical operators are used to receive values within 
range okay so for example i want all those who are born after 1st april 1996 so i say greater than one one uh, sorry 4 1 1996 okay or for example i want those who are between 25 to 30 okay so when you want values within a specific range you will be using logical operators okay greater than less than equal okay these operators you will be using when you want values within a certain range okay next the question goes on to say the three tables within the club details club details database form a relationship give one reason why tables are linked together with relationships before entering data okay so they're asking you a reason why are tables connected together why are tables linked together using relationships before entering the data so the reason the relationship is created first and the data is entered is so that you will not have to repeat values on each of the tables okay so s otherwise if the tables are not connected you will have to manually go to each table and enter the data let me give you an example for example if we are in the accommodation uh, okay now say for example accommodation table and booking table are connected via the accommodation ref now if these two are not connected when you are filling the bookings table you will also have to put a value for accommodation ref you got it you will also have to put a value for accommodation ref okay you will have to type in your own value okay but if these two tables are connected the accommodation ref can automatically be selected from the accommodation table itself users cannot put a value that is not there in the accommodation ref okay this is only possible if the tables are connected if a relationship has been established if a relationship has not been established users can put inaccurate values in the accommodation ref and the table would accept would accept it because the two are not connected it has nothing to check against isn't it but when the two tables are connected when you put an inaccurate value for accommodation ref it will check the accommodation table because they are connected it will check the accommodation table and say well this value is not there so this value cannot be accepted okay i hope you're able to follow with what i'm saying okay so you can say the question said uh, why tables are linked together you can say the reason is to prevent inaccurate details from being entered into the table okay so we do not want the users entering inaccurate da data like I gave you an example over here like I gave you the example over here if these two tables are not here when, s when somebody is entering data into the bookings table they can put an accommodation ref that does not exist or by mistake they might put a value that does not exist since the two tables are not connected it will accept it but if the two tables are connected it will immediately tell you this value does not exist in the accommodation table okay so it will force you to get it correct then and there okay <coughs> then the question paper goes on to say identify one foreign key in the linked tables so as you know a foreign key is a primary key from another table okay so when you look at this relationship you can see in the bookings table in the bookings table the booking ref is the primary key while the foreign key foreign key meaning a primary key from another table so accommodation ref is a foreign key it's a primary key from the accommodation table okay so you can write over here uh, the accommodation ref accommodation accommodation ref in booking table okay let's get this correct accommodation ref in the bookings table okay so with that with that we have come to the end of the database question okay i hope you're clear if you're not clear you have my email address that you can get in touch with me uh so remember save task a2 and you can start printing it as well okay so in our next video we'll be moving on to task a3 which is uh, to do with presentation software okay see you in the next video